Hello people, my name is Ben, and this is the video for week 21 of Ben Beats game, w in which I completed two games. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it, depending on how long they were, and the first one, Valiant Hearts at least, was much longer than I anticipated, clocking in at, clocking in at around six to eight hours, which was, I thought it was going to be like four to five, but no, it was more substantial than that, and for about £12, $15, uh, that's a pretty substantial and good amount of time. So let's talk about Valiant Hearts, shall we? Uh, I quite liked it. I think it's a good game. I don't think it's great. Just, it's almost great. Uh, definitely not amazing, though, in my opinion. Uh, people seem to be fairly split about this game. Some people really, really love it. Uh, I know Destructoid gave it like a 9 out of 10. I personally would not, um, and it's a shame because I think it, just with a few changes, it very easily could have hit that. As you can see by the gameplay, beautiful, beautiful game. It's using the UBR engine, so of course it, it looks amazing. Um, there are a few graphical hiccups here and there with like uh, some bits of art clipping through each other, which looks kind of ugly, but they're very few and far between. They don't hamper the experience too much. Uh, but other than that, it looks very, very nice. Uh, the presentation is excellent, and yeah, that's probably the strongest suit of the game. All of the voice acting, what little bits there are, include the narrator, uh, Emil, who's kind of the main character, I guess. You play as like four characters, but Emil, I, I would say, is the main one, who is the first guy you play as, who you're probably seeing the gameplay of right now. The guy with the sweet bed. And uh, his voice acting is pretty damn good and I hope that guy uh, does more stuff in the future because I did enjoy his performance in it uh, while well, all that was. Most of it, uh, just most of the story is like communicated in grunts and through visuals and through little bits of phrases you can very clearly see what's going on and then the narrator sets up each scene. So that's, that part is good, that part's very good. Uh, however, <laughs> what's weird is that it tries to contrast uh, two very different things. So it's about World War One, and we don't really get any games about World War One because it was just a horrible, disgusting war. Like every war, I know, but as in, it's not very easy to glorify it because it would kind of be very boring. It was a lot of just troops running into running into battle, getting shot down. The strategies were throw as many troops at the enemy as possible until they are until they are overwhelmed, meaning a lot of people died. And the thing is, I didn't really know that uh, to any real extent before I played this game, which is another really good thing about it. It does teach you a lot about World War One. Like, I didn't know beforehand that uh, Canadians were the first to discover how they could combat chlorine gas to an extent, um, or mustard gas. Whatever you want to call it, the official name is of course chlorine gas. Uh, by using urine-soaked handkerchiefs, uh, that would actually filter out uh, the gas, pretty much. Of course, it wasn't the most hygienic thing, but it worked. And that was before, about a year later or so, the actual gas masks, max, the gas masks were introduced. And that's really interesting, and it's cool that I learned stuff from this. It's a nice educational game for World War One, which is a war that I knew very, very little about. And that is really fantastic. Uh, I do think that the way some of the facts and stuff were told to you, you basically just bring up a thing and then it's like a ton of relevant facts about this portion of the game. Sometimes it can be like five or six paragraphs. Um, I want, you know, one paragraph for each thing, but like there are five or six things, so it's five or six paragraphs. Um, and to have all that dumped on you at the start of a level, a little bit overwhelming and really deters me from wanting to actually read it if they integrate it into the game somehow, uh, had an option for the like narrator, I think would be really cool to, to have an option for the narrator telling you uh, these as you play, because it's primarily a puzzle game, and you know, as you're solving puzzles, not too much is happening, so an option for that would have been really, really welcome. Uh, so the main problem, I guess, I have is that it tries to deal with World War One in a more serious manner, or so I thought, because 
it shows all this horrors of war and it doesn't really glorify it too much, but then it has this cartoonish villain, the Baron, who is like definition of twirly mustache guy. Um, who like, you know, has wine and stuff and is sloshing it about and then runs away and you gotta go chase him down. And that's not really realistic at all. And then yeah, he's in ridiculous contraptions and stuff, as in like really big tank, and you're supposed to be rising up and fighting against him, and it doesn't really work because I don't think that they should have had like a main villain. It's war, unless it's like World War Two, where I guess you could argue that Hitler's the main villain. There really isn't one, and the fact that they kind of put one in there. Uh, which was very cartoonish and there's like some jokes made around him and jokes made in general like a few you know bits of humor here and there is okay but it really detracted from all the serious parts because I really couldn't get into the mood when it keeps getting disrupted by all this ridiculous stuff going on and the amount of crazy coincidences there are for all of these characters to meet up and such it was it was a bit too far and that's what really detracted from the game. That and a few incredibly unrealistic situations that the characters survive uh, make no, no goddamn sense. And it makes me think, okay, great, they're all invincible. Uh, so I, I don't worry about them nearly as much. Because it's like, yeah, they get thrown around, explosions happen right next to them, but they're fine. Uh, and that just that distracts and detracts from the core good part of the game which is like the serious tone and then the style and what that can bring to it I think that's a real shame I didn't mind the gameplay it's a game that I've mentioned many times before on stream that's very much style over substance not great gameplay it has a few variations here and there one of them being uh, like a a car chase uh, that has you know classical music playing over it but it's very that's one of the most like comedic type of parts because it's kind of very like happy even though you know there are people in World War One trying to kill you at this very moment but it plays it off as like oh well so uh, it's a video game and I think that was the wrong angle to go with other than that though I'd say when it goes on sale uh, you should definitely check it out it's definitely worth checking it out uh, it still has a pretty great story uh, one of the strongest parts of the game, uh, you know, with, along with the presentation. Uh, you'll learn quite a bit about World War One if you don't know all that much like I didn't. Uh, and you'll probably have a lot, a lot of fun with it because of that. And it's a pretty good length because of it, and there are quite a few things to collect. And it has an adorable doggy, so why would you not want to play it just for that? Anyway, so the next game was Shovel Knight. Oh my god, do I love Shovel Knight. So this, I've kickstarted four games. I've kickstarted uh, Double Fine Adventure, Broken Age now, uh, The Banner Saga, Shadowrun Returns, and Shovel Knight. And Shovel Knight is up there with probably Broken Age as my absolute favorite one that I've kickstarted. Uh, like, I'm very pleased that all of the games that I kickstarted have turned out to be great games, but my god, Shovel Knight is just incredible. It is so, so good. Uh, it sticks with the NES theme throughout, in terms of the music, in terms of the limited color palette, the beautiful sprite work. I don't... It's insane how talented these guys are to make 8-bit sprites look so nice and smooth and surprisingly detailed. They just look incredibly good especially the boss knights that, that's where it really shines it's a fantastic game uh, it, I beat it in just over six hours but you can go back for new game plus there's some uh, free content that's coming out for it that they promised because of like uh, Kickstarter uh, you know when they reach their goal and then they got uh, beyond other reach goals I forget what the normal term is for them but whatever you know what I mean uh, extra goals where they get, you know, if they get a certain amount of money then they will put this in the game. Such as a gender swap mode which is swapping all of the genders, so as in Shovel Knight will be probably Shield Knight I would assume. Uh, you know, the girl 
in it, but also all the boss knights will be girl versions. Uh, so that's really cool. That's going to be coming as a free update, as well as a freaking multiplayer mode. A multiplayer mode where you can play as the boss knights. It's awesome. I can't wait for that, and it's not going to be like paid for DLC, because they said that they were going to put it in it. They're not going to like cut it off, they're still working on it. Shovel Knight has one of the best goddamn soundtracks of any retro style or retro actual game I've ever heard. It's by the same guy who did the Retro City Rampage soundtrack, who's done Mighty Switch Force 1 and 2 soundtracks. You can get those for free on his band cap. It's pay what you want. I highly recommend you actually pay some money because this guy deserves a lot of it because he's fantastic. I will put the link to that in the description because it's so, so, so good. Anyway, uh, Shovel Knight, it's fantastic. Uh, just amazing gameplay. Just just go play Shovel Knight. It's like £11. It's on Wii U, 3DS, and Steam. You have pretty much no excuse not to buy it. There's no way your laptop or PC will not run Shovel Knight. I mean, just look at it. But it's still, I still think it looks fantastic. Despite, you know, lol, so retro type thing. If you can do retro right, then... Yeah, you can do retro right, and that's what these guys can do. They are doing a fantastic job of it. Um, this is this is basically how it's done, uh, showing uh, various other games like I guess Fist Puncher and stuff like that, which uh, look kind of ugly because of their retro style. Uh, this is how to make a really good-looking retro style game that sticks with the NES kind of thing throughout like it feels like if you put this on an NES then an NES could run it because it's that kind of I guess basic but in the best way imaginable such such a fantastic game I highly recommend you all go and play it whenever you can because it is so so good I'll probably be writing up a review on it as I might do with Valiant Hearts as well so you'll see more in-depth opinions when I actually type up the reviews uh, because I do want to get back into that, and I'll let you guys know when they are available. However, week 22, uh, you'll see what it is when I start streaming it today. Although, I'm not sure if this is going to go up on the Monday or Tuesday. We'll see. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.